Okay, welcome back to the third video uh, on this painting of Villa Monastero and uh, Lake Como. Um, last video, I spent a lot of time just kind of working here on my focal point, stuff that's near. Um, and just to balance the painting off, I'm going to get back into working over on this side of the painting, um, way off in the distance. And, uh, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and take a look at the reference photo. Um, so let, let's go take a look at that back in here. So what we saw there was a little bit of change in value here. It gets a little darker in here, and it also gets a little bit more green. Uh, this point of the peninsula over here and Bellagio, the town, is right over here. Um, it's quite a bit closer to us than anything back here. So we can start to see a little bit more green color. And so I'm always still using the cobalt blue, but I'm mixing just a little bit. That's too much. Just a little bit of that sap green in there. And again, I'm going to keep it quite light. And I'm going to go in, taking a peek at my reference photo, and start to uh, just add some changes to this. If you ever want to soften an edge or um, have it go lighter, just give your brush a rinse like this and uh, come in with the clean water down here and then go up into the color you just put down. So what I have is a nice even gradation from dark to light and also from the greener blue down to the blue. And uh, I, I use that technique a lot. I am gonna allow a little bit of this color down in here. Oh, sometimes a nice hard edge like this is necessary, but sometimes you want um, other things, like just a nice soft transition. I'm going to bring you in nice and close for this portion because um, I think we often think of this as doing detail work, but it's actually not very detailed at all. But we want to give a sense that. There are some, uh, there's some houses and buildings over here. Of course, they're really tiny. And we're just going to do that with the slightest change in color and value. And so we have kind of a darker shape down here. And then every so often, I'm just going to leave that color underneath. And we'll go into here too. On this hill there's not much actual structure. It's mostly very natural. Um, but then down here get a lot more houses, apartment buildings, restaurants. So this is kind of how I do that. It's just very simple. Again, I'm not worried about every actual building that's there. I just want to suggest it. Okay, so now I've got a little bit of just green and darker value back here and what you start to notice is that it starts to connect this part of the painting to this one. It's not feeling so separated. Um, 
And for the next stage, I'm gonna work a little bit more on the water here, but again, not putting a lot of detail in. Um, my water's a little dirty there, but mostly I'm just rinsing my brush and trying to put some clean water down. And we're gonna add a little bit of green in with our color that we're working on this with as well. Oops, stay back there. If ever your brush is too wet, just hit it, hit it against a paper towel. And then what you can do sometimes is your your brush can lift some of the water if you have too much on there. So we're going to allow a little bit of that green color to come into our water here. photo there's a, a little bit of a dark streak there almost gives us a little bit of perspective and I'm gonna blot out some of the water from my paper towel I'm just gonna soften these a little bit so again it's a damp brush but you're kind of going in with less water and you can a little bit more, soften the edges. And then down here where we have some of those shadows, there's just a little bit that comes out beyond there. We always think of water as being blue, but if you if you look carefully, you're always seeing quite a bit of green in it as well. Okay, let's let that dry. Okay, so that's dry now. Um, and as I was letting that dry, I'm noticing that up in here, if I look at my photographic reference, that uh, there's not such a crisp line there. There's definitely a transition on the horizon line between the, the mountains that come down to the edge of the lake and the water. Um, but it happens within a, a small area on my page, like about a quarter inch. So it actually gets a little darker in the water here. And it's really kind of hard to tell uh, where that transition, where that horizon line is exactly. So I want to incorporate that into my painting. And I'm noticing that has just a little bit more blue to it, actually. So I'm going to go back to my cobalt blue. brush a rinse. I'm going to soften that edge. Again, I, I like to call this a transition. Because there's no one like really crisp line that you can see there. It 
happens back here too. It just happens a little less. It's not so so noticeable. I'm still going to put that back here as well. Okay, now that my painting has quite a bit more balance to it, I'm going to come back to the part of the painting that I really love, and that's the detail work here. Uh, and I'm going to go to my liner brush or rigger brush. This has uh, longer hair, uh, less width, but it holds quite a bit of paint because of the length here. And so I find that I can be here working on my details and not having to go back and forth to my palette most of the time. And as I'm looking at my reference photo, I see quite a bit of green in here, but it's also quite a bit darker than just the paint right out of the tube. So I'm going to add some Payne's Gray to this, and it's going to enable me to get a really dark green um, that is really uh, cool in color, color temperature, which is what I'm going to want down here. I don't want that spring green look. And so I'm going to start light. Definitely start to indicate some of the rippling of the water here. When you're doing detail work like this, of course, you know, we know that this is sort of a repetitive pattern, but if you just get um, too bogged down on just sort of repeating the same old thing, um, it can look rather unnatural. And what, what happens in nature is that no two things are really the same. Everything's a little bit different. So I always encourage people to just, um, when you're painting patterns like this, have it be a little bit different, you know, have it have a, a darker area here, a smaller part of the pattern here, and so on. And have it change color for instance I can I can bring I'm noticing a little bit more blue in there so I can bring a little bit more cobalt blue into that so that so the color here changes and the key to this is some of that dry color the lighter blue underneath is to letting that show through that's the actual reflection of the light off the water light coming from the sky And so as I'm getting down into here, I get away from that retaining wall. I'm going to see more of that. And if you have areas that are darker, you can just mix some more of that Payne's Gray up and just drop it in there, especially while this is wet. And just let it bleed on in. It would be quite a bit darker here, right up next to the wall. Less light reflecting off of it. That looks good. I'm just going to let that dry. Okay, now I'm going to move into working on this retaining wall here. And I 
again, making a connection, connecting it to some of the dark that happens here in the water. I'm going to go back in with my Payne's Gray here. This is a great color. I think one of the one of my favorite colors to use in a painting to make connections like this. Uh, it's one of the more inexpensive pigments as well. So uh, you can afford to buy it again and again if you need to. And I'm gonna do something very similar to what I did back here which is leave areas of what is painted underneath every so often to indicate where a little bit of light is hitting some of these stones. And I can also get some, again, they're not bricks, they are stones, so it's not like they all line up, but there is definitely a, a direction that they take goes along with the wall. So I'm gonna get some lines in here. And then I go back and dab to kind of connect areas of the dark. Darkest area is right in here. So I'm gonna allow that to be Mostly dark, right down into here. I'm going to bring you guys in quite a bit closer here. And do some of this. I'm noticing in the video is that sometimes the reflection coming off the the water when the painting is wet doesn't really enable you to see the dark. So I'm going to experiment a little bit more with uh, better lighting and just the angle that it's coming from. I think that'll help. Um, but this is the area where it really starts to curve a bit and come towards the viewer, but it's also an area where I can see some of the most, the, well, the lighter part of the stone, if you will. Again, sort of bringing some of that down into the water. I think it's good to, to have connections between these things because I think contrast is so so high in this photograph that we you can't sometimes see the transition between things. You don't have to do this all in one layer. Just do some, let it dry, come back and do another layer. Doesn't have to all be done at once. Okay. There, bring it into focus. So this is what it's looking like now. Let's, uh, Let's dry this with the blow dryer and then see what it looks like. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I feel like I'm actually getting somewhere, getting closer to finished. Um, I'm gonna stop for today, but one of the last things I'm gonna do in our session is I'm just gonna take some of these pencil lines out with a vinyl eraser. Um, I think 
I really don't need them as a roadmap anymore. I'm going to take some of those out. I'm going to leave the lines in for the palm tree. I'm going to be careful doing this. Some of the watercolor pigment can lift, so you want to proceed with caution. Um, and you always want to make sure you do it with a clean part of your eraser so it doesn't put graphite or something onto your painting. But I'm just noticing some of this, this pigment is lifting here, which can actually be an interesting effect, but not, not if you don't want it. So I'm just getting down to pretty much just paint here. Uh, in the next session, in the fourth video, I think we'll be able to finish this. And uh, we'll tighten up the details a little bit here, maybe work a little bit more in the sky, put the leaves on the palm tree, and I think we'll be able to finish up. So thanks for joining me uh, in video number three. And I look forward to seeing you in video four and finishing this painting up. Ciao.